All right, guys, this is 1.1.2 for Algebra 2. So um, we're going to do a lot of stuff on Desmos today. Um, so to start off, uh, we really only got one problem. And if you have, uh, if you want the link here that I have on top, you can either pull it off of my, um, my PowerPoint from my site, or you can, uh, in your book, it should have a link to this. At your, your online book should have a link to this as well. Um, it's, it's a Desmos activity, which is going to be an easier way for us to kind of do this online. Um, normally in class, we'd kind of graph these um, on a graphing calculator and then kind of explore it in that way and, and, and answer these questions. So what I want you to do is go ahead and just um, open up this Desmos most link, and it'll have all of these um, eight equations already on it, and you can you'll have to kind of scroll down a, a little bit to actually see them. Turn those on and kind of look at how those um, look, and then try and answer uh, these questions as you kind of look through and explore those and see kind of what the re relationships are between um, those graphs and the equations. Um, so go ahead and pause the video, go ahead and do that, and then come back here and I will be going through those. All right, so if I pull up my Desmos camera, there we go. So uh, we have a number of uh, e e equations here. So the first one here, um, if I graph that, we're looking, it has this kind of shape here. It's kind of going up and then to the left. It kind of starts at this kind of strange point. Now if I do that for uh, this next one, I get this kind of half circle shape. That's a pretty unique graph, okay? Or here, I get another one that kind of starts here and kind of goes up and to the right now, as opposed to the, this one, which is up and to the left. Uh, and here, we're going up and to the left. Uh, here, we're having kind of a half oval. It's kind of going down. It's actually a half ellipse, to be precise. Uh, here we have another one that kind of starts and then goes down and to the right. Uh, and then we have one that's another kind of top part of an ellipse there. And then uh, this last one here, again, starts and then goes up and to the left. So what's common here? So let's take a look at these questions which are kind of being asked. They're, they're also here if you want to see. Um, so what are the key points in the graph? What are they exactly? So let's go ahead and take a look at this first one, right? So I'm starting here at the point uh, 4, negative 1. So I say, well, where am I seeing that starting point on my actual e equation? Well, I see a 4 here and I see a negative 1 here, right? But then I have this kind of minus x. So I'm definitely seeing some kind of connection there. So let's try and expand that and say, hey, if that's true, can we use that to make a prediction about, some, about something else? So let's go up to like this one here, right? Um, we have a 4 here, and then we have a negative 3 here. So if our prediction is right, this should uh, go to the right 4 because of this, right? And then it should be down at negative 3. So let's see if that's true. We're over to the right 4, down at negative 3. Hey, our prediction worked awesome. We're kind of feeling good there, right? Well, now let's, let's take a look up, up here on this one, right? Here we have 9 and negative 4. So where should this one end up being? Well, our guess would be it's going to be at the x value 9, the y value being negative 4. Let's see if that works. Hey, there it is. Over 9, down to negative 4. We're seeing that kind of pattern there. And all those were going to the left. Now, one of these went to the right. That was the one here, right? So what's different about that purple graph than the orange one and the blue one? Well, here's that, that 4. But now we're actually here at negative 4. And then we have that negative 6, we're down at, at negative 6. Well, what we're seeing, the difference here is like here to here, is here I have x plus 4, which I could put 4 plus x, it would be the same thing, right? Here I have 4 minus x, okay? So if I change that addition to now subtracting the x, I first of all change the direction of that graph, but I also caused the um, kind of starting point to be changed as, as well, where here was always positive, now here it's going to be on that negative side, right? But we're definitely seeing that correlation between those, val those values there. So let's take a look at some other parts here. So let's, how about this number in front, which we haven't really addressed yet? So down here at 23, so our green graph, there's like a, a 1 there. There's, there's always that invisible 1 in, in front of stuff if you need it. So how does the green graph compared to the orange graph and the blue graph. So the green has a 1, the blue has a 2, orange has a 3. Well, you can kind of see that my blue is 
kind of steeper and taller than my green, and my orange is steeper and taller than my blue, right? So we're kind of seeing more and more steep. So if I were to change that to being higher, then I should see be more and more steep. Well, how, how about if I throw a negative in front, right? Like this negative two here. What's that negative going to do? Well, let's, ch let's check it out. Uh, actually, that, that's about because it's uh, one of those. How about this one here? There we go. So now, hey, it got flipped over, right? So now, if it's negative, it's actually going down. So we're seeing all these kind of patterns and relationships between all of these. It probably answered a few of these questions here. Um, can you identify at least five integer inputs for a given integer and, and out and outputs? Well, yeah, so if I plug in a few val values here, you can kind of get those. We can plot points. That's kind of more applicable for not doing this on Desmos. Spoilers. Um, um, are there values of x or y that do not make sense? Well, let's take a look at uh, the top one here, this blue one. I'll get rid of these ones. They're not as confused. So here, right? Are there values of x which don't make sense? So our inputs are all of our possible x's which we could plug in. Stuff over here wouldn't, isn't on our, our graph. Well, let's check out why that is. So let's take, take x is 10, right? x is 10 has nothing on the actual graph. Well, why is that? Let's plug in 10 for x and see what we get. If I plug in x is 10 here, I get 9 minus 10 is negative 1. We're out of negative 1. There's our problem, right? We have a square root of a negative number immediately, right off the bat. So, hey, that's why we're not seeing that. So we can't have any x values that are larger than 9, because 9 gets a 0, and we're out of 0 is 0, which is fine. Once I get bigger than 9, now I get negatives, and I can't do that. So how about my ranges? Well, what y values can I not get out of here? Well, I can't really get this part here, this part that I highlighted, I really can't make that negative, right? I can't have a negative inside of that radical because then it's a imaginary and I can't do it. And if I then multiply that by 2, it's a positive times 2 is still going to be positive. So the lowest number that I can get out of that blue section is just 0. And then 0 minus 4 is negative 4. So that's as low as this value is ever going to get. But I can put any, but, but I can get an, an output that is higher than that. So that's what I kind of hope you can, you can kind of see from there. Um, how low does the graph go? Okay, answer, answer, answer that. Is the graphing calculator accurate? Again, it's a little bit different because we're going to do this on Desmos, not a graphing calculator. Um, how can we be sure the graph is complete? So. We kind of just verified that, right? We just kind of showed how, well, I can't plug in x is 10 because it doesn't work. And, and I can't get y is negative 5 because I can only get positive, get as low as 0 here, and then minus 4 can, can only go, go down to negative 4. So we're kind of seeing how all of those things relate. Now, the only thing we really haven't covered yet is those ones that kind of gave us the ellipses. That was this one, and this one, and this one. So what's different about those? than the other ones that's kind of causing that to happen. And you probably already noticed it, right? It's this x to the, to the second power inside of that square root, which we kind of say, um, see. Now, it feels kind of weird, right? And this kind of kind of shows a really, really common math there that, that people make. And people say, hey, if I take the square root of 100 minus x to the second, they may say, hey, that's just 10 minus x. That's a line. The graph there is clearly not a line. And that's because, again, you can't do square roots through addition and subtraction signs. If this was 100 times x, x squared, 10x, easy, done, right? But that minus makes things a lot more difficult, a lot more complex, hence, hence us getting this kind of more complex shape like we have there. So as long as you're kind of able to kind of see and identify those things, that's what I really care about for this particular um, lesson. So let me pop back over to this. And pull I got some stuff on my end. All right, now I can change the sites. OK, so um, that's really it for today. I'm going to kind of cover the notes and then uh, closure, and then we'll call it good. So um, this is notes on linear equations. Again, you should be very, very familiar with linear equations. Um, you typically see them in the form uh, y equals mx plus, plus b, where you have our slope and our y-intercept. And those are just kind of general mathy terms for uh, the in instantaneous rate, rate of change, uh, instantaneous the average rate of change, and then the um, uh, initial value, right? But in kind of mathy terms, it's slope and intercept. 
So you're kind of seeing all these things here, which you've seen in the past. I'm not going to go, go over this a ton because, again, this should be fairly second nature to us at this point. All right, uh, for our closure, let's think back to those graphs we just kind of went over in Desmos. What similarities, what caused different things? Um, how did those numbers relate like? We saw that one number caused stuff to move left and right. One number caused it to go up or, up or down. One caused it to uh, change how steep it was. Kind of thinking about how that actually worked out for us. All right, uh, homework for this section. Again, this is 1-1-2. Make sure you label it. We're doing 12 through 18. All right, I'll talk to you guys next time.